Please! Stop using classes in JavaScript. Okay. Welcome to Costco. Okay, I'll turn off alerts. I love you. Okay, I'll turn them off. Yeah, maybe I forgot. M maybe I forgot to turn off alerts. I'll turn them off. Here's a bunch of JavaScript that appears to be using jQuery. This is some jquery code going on right here. I don't even see any classes in this jquery -ness. I also see repetitively jQuery being invoked with window over and over and over and over again. And it's like triggering the crap out of me. Dude. Hit him with that dollar window variable already. Stop reconstructing over and over again, okay? It's an emotional, painful day to see this over and over again. For years, OOP, object-oriented program, was the de facto standard in software engineering. The concept of classes, polymorphism, which, by the way, is also in functional programming, inheritance, encapsulation, also in functional programming, dominated and revolutionized uh, the development process. By the way, classes are also in functional programming. Uh, oh, no, they're not classes. They're structs with methods. On. They're different. Really? You're going to go with that? That's how you want to do this? Oh, okay. Sorry. It's a struct with the V table look up for methods. Oh, I think, gosh. Goodness gracious. I got that one wrong. Uh, but everything has an expiration date. Programming paradigms included. In this article, I'll talk about why classes were introduced in the first place and why, 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 why it is a bad idea to use classes in JavaScript. Okay, apparently I can't zoom in that much. And what are some of the alternatives? Okay, I'm not going to talk about why OOP is fading away in general, but you can check that out in this great article. Please tell me you wrote this article. Please tell me you wrote this article. You did not write this article. Okay, because that would be so hilarious if you're like, this great article, and then boom. Pre-ES6 classes. Okay, at this point, I agree. Classes were stupid. I'm on team prototypical crap or proto prototypal. Proto just the tipple was just insanity. Okay, when I saw code that was trying to con that hobbled together these class-like experiences, it, it, just the syntax alone was so off-putting. Uh, even though the class keyword was added uh, to JavaScript since ES6, ECMAScript 2015, people were using classes earlier. The way to achieve this uh, was constructor functions and prototype delegation. To show you exactly what I mean, I'm going to implement a similar class in ES5 and ES6 environments. Consider car and sports car. Again, I agree. Inheritance sucks. Uh, that inherits a uh, car. Both have make and model properties. Start method and blah, 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 blah. Okay, car looks like that. Prototype looks like that. Two string looks like this bad boy. Sports car looks like this. Car call this. Yes. Oh, yeah. Call it with that. Oh, uh. Uh, there we go. Looks great. Look at this stupidness. Look at how stupid that looks. Look, would you look at that? Would you look at how dumb this looks? I don't remember if you have to object.create the prototype or if you're just supposed to assign it to car's prototype. I don't remember, and I'm confused. Uh, constructor equals sports car. I don't remember having to do this to do inheritance, but it's been so long since I played with both inheritance and prototypes that I can't remember. You know what I mean? Anyways, who cares about all this? Blah, 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 blah. As you probably guessed, the car line 2 and sports car line 18 functions are constructor functions. The property are defined using this keyword, and the object themselves are created via the new keyword. Yay! If you're not familiar with prototype, this is a special property that every JS object has to delegate common behavior. For example, a prototype for an array object has functions you probably well know. Map for each, find, everyone's least favorite one, reduce. Uh, the prototype for strings has functions like replace, subster. Didn't subster get deprecated? Just a just a just a quick just a quick check. Did Substore get deprecated? I cannot remember. Deprecated. It's been deprecated. You don't want to use Substore. Deprecated. Okay. Ain't nobody using Substore. That's for rookies. That's for rookies. Okay. For rookies. Uh, anyways, after the car object is created on line 33, you can access its properties and methods. To start the car, blah, 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 blah. There we go. The JS engine, uh, the JavaScript engine asks the car object for the value with the keyword start. That object responds with no such value. The JS engine asks the car.prototype object for the value keyword start. The car prototype returns the start function. The JS engine executes immediately. Accessing the make and model properties are performed similarly, except that they are defined on the car object directly instead of the prototype. Okay. Fantastic. Inheritance is a bit trickier to handle. Yep, you got to do like, you got to keep on jumping, blah, blah, blah. Okay, who cares? I don't care. We all know how this works. It's Let's just go on. With the release of ES6 in 2015, the long-awaited class keyword arrived in JavaScript. It was super done. Wait, it was done as a per numerous request by the community because people were feeling uncomfortable from uh, coming from object-oriented languages. But they uh, but they missed one important point. Um, Was that it? Okay. Maybe people wanted an object with, with functions as well. State container with functions. You know, a lot of people like those. Just throwing it out there. Some people like that. JavaScript has no idea what classes are. Well, 
Uh, JavaScript is a non-object oriented language. Well, that's a pretty strong phrase to say. It was not designed to be one. The notion of classes is absolutely not applicable to it. Well, I mean, it kind of, I mean, you, I mean, even in the shitty prototype thing, you still kind of could do objects and inheritance and look up. I mean, what are you going to do? Recreate it with closures? Uh, while everything in JS is indeed an object, these objects are different from the ones in Java or C Sharp. In JS, the object uh, is simply a map data structure with a somewhat sophisticated lookup procedure. Yeah, prototype. Uh, that, is, uh, that is it, really. And when I say everything is an object, I mean it. Even functions are objects. You can check it out with the snippet. Yes, you can actually you can actually do that. You can look at an object. They're objects. Uh, OOP without classes exists. It's true. In fact, we read an article where you could create the world's most bastardized version of the prototype chain, and that's true message passage object-oriented programming. Uh, okay, this is all good, but how does the class keyword work then? Glad you asked. Do you remember car and sports card earlier? Well, this class keyword is simple syntactic sugar on top of that. Uh, okay, uh, in other words, classes produces conceptually the same code uh, and serves only as aesthetic and readable uh, readability purposes. As I promised earlier, here we go. Okay, fantastic, awesome. So it has all the same thing, blah, 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 blah. Okay, these examples are identical and produce the, sim uh, the same results. What is interesting is they produce almost the same code underneath the hood. I will not write it out here, but if you are curious, go look at my... Okay, don't look at the... Okay, that's... First off, this is super unfair. And what I mean by this is super unfair is that if you're using a transpiler to show something, that means you're not actually using the feature itself, right? You're just transpiling it into ES5. So of course they look the same. That's because they just translated it to the same target, okay? To the same target. Now, they may be implemented identically underneath the hood. I don't know. I honestly have no idea if classes are implemented directly underneath the hood. I would guess they are not because there's some optimizations you can do very obviously with classes because you can't change a class, right? You can't just, or the expectation is you don't, you can't just start adding things to the prototype. I mean, you can, it's JavaScript. You can do anything no matter how horrible you feel, but you know, in no way it's some regex. It's always some regex. Uh, why not? Anyways, now you should have an understanding of what classes in JS are and how they work. Now, with all this knowledge, I can explain why using uh, classes in JS is a bad idea. Okay, binding issues. A class constructor functions deal closely with the this keyword. It can introduce potential binding issues, especially if you try to pass your class method as a callback to an external thing. Um, did you know in React, if your props has a child, uh, uh, children's object, but you define your own children, your children's object will not be respected. But if you don't, it is respected, right? I mean, there's oddities all over the world. I get that. I, this always seems like such a weird thing to call out with JavaScript because JavaScript gives you the keys to be able to take any function and bind it to anything. It just feels weird that that is somehow, that's a negative. That's, that's like a JavaScript design philosophy out the gate is that you can attach it to anything. I don't I don't really understand that. That's if you don't like it, that's JavaScript. It's JavaScript. You can do the same crap no matter what. Now relying on the this keyword, I can understand why people don't like it, but that's why we have a that's why we have syntax. It removes all the ambiguity to it. Uh, performance issues, and that's why we have TypeScript. It removes all the ambiguity to it. Uh, performance issues. Because of classes implementation, they are notoriously difficult to optimize at runtime. Hmm. While we enjoy performing machines at the moment, the fact that Moore's law is fading will change all of that. I don't know if I believe you on this one. Private variables. One of the great advantages and the main uh, reasons for classes in the first place is private variables is just non-existent in JS. Wait, is this a wait? Is this a pros or a cons? You you caught me off. Why not? Okay, hold on. Now I'm confused. Is this a cons list or a pros list? Because I feel like we just switched gears in the middle of it and being like private variables are great. I'm like what? Strict hierarchies. Class introduce a straight top to bottom order and make changes harder to implement, which is unacceptable in most uh, JavaScript applications. You can just not use inherit. You know what I mean? Because the React team tells you you uh, tells you not to. Is this a React Brain article? I don't know. Think about all the things you do in React because you know how to do it. You know, you know to pass in an array on use effect, or else it's called every single time it's rendered. Are you saying that that somehow that's totally acceptable uh, complexity added to an application, but knowing that you have to bind a function if you pass a raw dog function around, 
that's not acceptable. I don't know. It feels like the rules are arbitrary. You know what I mean? It feels very arbitrary. Like one version of complexity is very okay, but the other version is not okay. Second off, saying that React, React doesn't decide what is good or bad. React has their own opinions on things that are good and bad. And if you want to do the things that they want to do, then you can do it however they want to. But if you don't want to do it the way they want to do it, you can do it how you want to. This is, the, yes, the people always say learn React. This is the this is the truest problem of learning React before JavaScript, if that's even a, a, a phrase one can say that makes any sort of co coherent sense, right? I have this really hard time with this coherency of that phrase. People say it all the time, but I know what you're trying to say, which is they learn JavaScript by learning React. And it makes you think that React is the arbiter of what is good or bad. I would argue that creating an array, every single render in every single one of your functions for every single one of your use effects, not great. And then to also take back all the use effects and say they're bad. I'd say that was also bad, right? So it's not like they're winning all the time either. I'd say that foot guns exist everywhere in this language because it's crazy. Uh, all of these issues can be uh, mitigated with JS objects and prototype delegation. Like classes? Okay, I'm super confused. JS offers uh, so much more than classes can ever do, yet most developers are blind to it. If you want to truly master JS, you need to embrace its philosophy and move away from dogmatic class-based thinking. Okay. Was this like season one of 1899? You're going to leave us on a cliffhanger like here? Like, hey, by the way, there's actually a much better way to do it with prototype delegation and JS objects. What? You mean like classes? No, they're better. What are they? This is not a Jippity article. Someone wrote this by hand. No examples yet. I want to know what he means because honestly, genuinely, if you can help me see something that I'm missing here, I'd love to see it. So where are classes really, really good? Well, classes give you a blueprint, which means that I would be shocked. Honestly, I still would be shocked if classes are less optimized than just simply objects with hanged, uh, hanging on functions. I, I really do want to test that. I really do want to prove to myself that is real or not real. Uh, I, I would assume there's just much more garbage collection and all that that goes on. Uh, second off, munging around with prototypes and calling that easier to work with than classes seems crazy, right? That's what the whole class keyword is, is to hide the whole prototype craziness, right? Okay, I get it. There are things classes are great for if you want a class that's a state container with a few uh methods to manipulate it it can be really really nice to have you know why it's very very simple all of the things that can manipulate and use that class are in the class itself your autocomplete makes it much much nicer experience it's very simple to find all the functions that are mostly associated with it if you don't if you want to just see which functions actually just use the object as opposed uh, that manipulates with those functions you can use find references blah 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 but if you have a bunch of objects if you have a bunch of things that are just hanging off by like say interface a bunch of different objects can call those as long as the interface accepts it and then it then it it causes this entire issue where this function may or may not be specifically for your object, but it manipulates functions like your object. And now you're going through a whole file that's separate. It doesn't even hang off your object. Like, I think, I really truly think that structs with methods associated with them is a very convenient, very good developer experience. You know what you have in your toolkit to edit it. It's just like if you're doing iterators or anything, being able to do dot map, dot reduce, dot whatever the hell you want to do, right? That's a very nice experience because it hangs off the object itself. If you don't have that, instead you have map, then you have to reduce cover it, then you have to do the next thing cover it, and it always is very annoying. Yes, locality of behavior is like a gigantic plus one in all aspects. The more localized you can make your behavior, the more understandable that behavior is. The name is I still will use classes, but I pretty much refuse to use inherits, though every now and then I try to use inherits because I think I really have a situation in which inherits would solve this problem well. And so far, I am five out of five for regretting my decisions using inherits. I pretty much do it every single time. At least three to five times a year, I decide I'm going to use inherits because this is the point. Extends is the time. The time is now, and I found the situation. And every time I've lived to regret it, the name is that whatever that was again.